Hi, welcome to Med School Coach Tutoring. My name is Andrew and I'll be walking us through a high yield topic on USMLE Step 1, and that is Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome versus Serotonin Syndrome. Now these two uh, patients will present very similarly. So here are a couple of examples. A 45-year-old patient with a history of schizophrenia presents with altered mental status, fever, and tachycardia. He was recently started on flufenazine seven days ago. His physical exam is remarkable only for muscle rigidity. His labs identify elevated CK, and his UA shows three plus light and negative for uh, RBCs. A 45-year-old man with history of depression is admitted for altered mental status, fevers, and tachycardia. He has also severe diarrhea. He was started with fluoxetine yesterday. Uh, physical exam is remarkable for hyperreflexia and diaphoresis. All labs are within normal limits. So it's uh, useful to understand neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Uh, a useful mnemonic here is uh, malignant fever. So you can have M standing for malignant, and then you have a fever. So that's kind of your mnemonic. The M is going to be for myoglobinuria. So this is important because on the UA, what you'll see is positive for blood, but negative for RBCs because you're not going to be able, there's no actual red blood cells that have lysed. Uh, it's actually the, the dipstick actually picks up the myoglobin instead. Um, so F is going to stand for fever. E is going to stand for enzyme elevation. So this typically means an elevated CK. V is going to stand for vital sign instability. So mostly tachycardia. E is going to stand for encephalopathy, meaning altered mental status. And R is going to be for rigidity of the muscles. So this is a neuroleptic malignant syndrome is uh, basically an exaggeration of the extrapyramidal symptoms that you get from uh, uh, antipsychotics. Serotonin syndrome, the useful mnemonic here is the three A's. So the first A is neuromuscular activity. You're going to have autonomic stimulation. You're going to have agitation. So it's useful to go through a chart probably more uh, than discussing it to look at the similarities, but more importantly, the differences. So for uh, both of these, hyperthermia and fever is going to be a symptom that both share. So that's not a useful tool to differentiate the two. Encephalopathy or altered mental status will be similar in both of them as well. And lastly, tachycardia will also be the same. The other things that are uh, here are actually all differences. So for the MSK, in NMS, you're going to have muscle rigidity, whereas in serotonin syndrome, you're going to have hyperreflexia. This is due to um, the uh, neuromuscular hyperactivity that you see in serotonin syndrome. In terms of autonomic symptoms, you're not going to have any autonomic symptoms for NMS, but you will have diarrhea and diaphoresis for serotonin syndrome. Uh, in terms of the onset, you're going to have NMS be much slower. So it's going to be on the order of days to weeks, uh, whereas serotonin syndrome will be more acute, so on a matter of hours to a day. The cause of NMS is going to be any antipsychotic. So uh, whereas, on the other hand, serotonin syndrome is going to be anything that increases serotonin in the, in the CNS, including MAOIs, SNRIs, SSRIs, etc. The treatment for NMS is going to be uh, dantrolene. The reason why is because um, dantrolene is a ryanidine receptor antagonist, and this is going to help alleviate the muscle contraction caused by kind of the exaggerated extrapyramidal symptoms. On the other hand, serotonin is going to be cycloheptadine, reason being it's a serotonin antagonist. So if we just look at our two patients once again, uh, we see that the first patient actually was diagnosed with NMS. Uh, I've highlighted the things that are important. So flufenazine seven days ago, muscle rigidity, CK levels, a three plus blood in the urine, but negative for RBC, suggesting myoglobinuria. On the other hand, serotonin syndrome is going to be uh, diarrhea, fluoxetine yesterday, hyperreflexia, and diaphoresis. Um, again, these two patients look very similar initially, altered mental status, fever, and tachycardia, but looking at the remainder of the uh, symptoms, uh, you're able to differentiate two. Thanks again for watching. For more information about our tutoring programs, please email info at medschoolcoach.com. Thank you.